Hello and welcome to this updated tutorial on getting started in Ultima Online Renaissance. If you have not been to the main website, you can find it at ulrenaissance.com. It has everything you need to get started as well as learn quite a bit about the game. Um, the main thing you're going to want to do to start off, of course, is download the client. Um, it's available in a number of formats. I would recommend just getting the default as it comes with UO AutoMap and Razor, two main tools you'll probably want to take advantage of. Um, once there, you can go through and learn more about the game if you wish. There's uh, getting started tutorials in the website, um, as well as on the forums. You should also try to get connected with the forums if you want to communicate with the other players more effectively outside of the game. Um, also there is IRC, there is a link to it on the main website. Um, another very useful tool for asking questions. Um, so without any further delay, let's go ahead and get in-game here. Now I'm skipping over the character creation, but um, there's not really a whole lot of customization apart from these skills in there. Um, so that's what I'll be showing you first is how you can arrange your skills as well as create new groups for your skills. Um, I just name my skill group usually use skills and just drag everything I'll be using into there. You don't have to do that, but you can if you want. Um, and so from all these skills, there's quite a few of them, um, you can select if you want them to be locked at zero. Um, all of them are starting at zero, but they will increase if you use them. So I go ahead and usually lock a lot of them at the beginning. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, but I mean, unlike a lot of other MMOs, Ultima Online is not based on uh, classes or levels. You just have all these skills and you can build up whatever type of character you want with them. Um, the type of character I'll be showing you today is a Bard Warrior or a Bard Dexer, as it's called sometimes. Uh, this character type I'm showing you because it's one of the most effective to get started with. Um, it costs almost nothing to create this character, as opposed to a lot of people who try to start with a mage, which is very difficult because you end up spending a lot of money on reagents doing that. Um, and so this is just an easy way for you to farm up some money, so if you want to create a mage as your second character, it'll be much easier. Uh, another important thing to know about skills is that you cannot learn them all. Well, you could if you wanted to be really bad at all of them, but you max out at 700 uh, real skill points. You'll see that I have a little um, green dot there checked that says show real. That shows the real skill that I have. Um, when it's unchecked, it shows you your usable skill, um, which is determining how successful you'll be with using a skill. And last thing before we move on from skills is that every skill that you train up can actually be dropped and um, overwritten by another skill. So if you get to your 700 skill point cap and you decide you want to change a character, you can just point the arrow down on a skill you no longer want. And when you train the other skill, it will take over those points and you will still stay at your cap of 700. All right, next thing that's simpler than skills but related to them is your stats. There's only three of them, strength, dex, and intelligence. Um, you will be given the default option to start out with 60 strength and 10 uh, intelligence and dexterity in the character creation. You can change those if you want, but I usually don't go anything more than 20 dex and then 50 strength. Unless you're planning on making a mage character, you usually don't start with a lot of intelligence. Um, so I'll show you one skill that is most commonly used to help get you a few extra stat points at the beginning of the game. Uh, you can get it by um, using camping. So I usually just use the dagger, go up to the nearby tree, and just start getting kindling. Um, you can repeat that process with a number of commands. Um, but I'm going to show you how Razor can actually help you um, get some skill points without actually having to uh, do so much clicking. So if you open up your razor, you can record an action, um, which might be, you know, using kindling. So I've had that set up here, and it's on a loop, so without clicking anything, my character is continually trying to light the kindling that has gone into my inventory there. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about razor in just a minute. Um, but as you can see, I've already gained one stat point from just trying to light a bit of kindling. Um, so we can customize this 
macro or make many others as you can see. I'm just adding a little bit of delay to this macro right now so I can continue doing more things in this video while it runs in the background which is usually the best way to do macros in the first place. Um, now the city you're starting out in is Aklo and one of the first locations you can get to from there is the blacksmith. To interact with the NPC vendors inside of the blacksmithy you have to type in vendor buy and enter. It will bring up a selection of things you can buy at the shop. Um, I'm just buying here because like I said I'm starting a warrior bard and um, typically you need to come to a shop like this in order to get anything to go out and do some fighting. Um, what I'm going to be starting with on this character is a chainmail tunic because it is a affordable option that still has plenty of armor and um, I don't think I'm actually going to get anything else at this shop right now. You do have 1000 starting gold um, which is enough to deck your character out in full armor and a new weapon if you want um, but I don't recommend spending all of your 1000 gold in the first shop you visit. Um, the first vendor I actually went to didn't have what I was looking for. You might actually have to go to, around to a few of them to find all the items you want. I kind of skipped over it, but uh, if you're not familiar with these types of games, gold is the main currency here. Um, and starting out with 1,000 is starting out with quite a small amount. You can easily spend it all in the first five minutes. So just do what I'm doing and take your time uh, looking through some vendors before you uh, hit that sign and purchase button to get things. So what I've gotten is the chainmail tunic and actually a uh, training weapon, just another dagger. Um, also, as you can see, I'm still gaining skill and stats from my camping macro that is going in the background while running around. Uh, now, speaking of running around, you can see it is quite slow right now. Well, it feels slow to me anyway. Um, and the world is actually very large. To run around at this speed uh, for the entire game, you will definitely be using up quite a bit of your time. Um, so to be more time effective here, you're probably going to want to go ahead and get a mount um, hmm, gee, I'm there. But uh, the best place to do that would be up at the stables. If you have not followed my path thus far, it's not too far from the starting point. Um, now you can go up to these guys and type in vendor buy. It will give you the option to buy a horse here. Um, I have an alternative option for you that will actually save you a whole lot of money in the long run. Uh, that one doesn't have a horse. Let's go this guy. Okay, so there's a horse. It's 550. Um, there is an alternative to getting the 550 horse, which is more than half of your starting money. Instead, you should train your taming up to 30. Uh, to train a skill at an NPC, type in the NPC's name and teach, and they'll give you a list of skills that they can teach you. Type in their name again, teach again, and then the skill you want to learn, and they'll tell you how much it will cost. Uh, go ahead and drag the gold directly onto them. I'm just going to drag 300 gold because I only need 30 skill here. Um, and so I've gained that 30 skill in taming, which is all I need. So I'm done with that. I'm going to go ahead and show you where you can tame your own horse. And the big advantage to this is, as a new player, um, if you get off your horse or for whatever reason you die, um, usually your horse dies as well and then you're out that 550. If you teach taming instead of buying the horse, it not only costs you a lot less money, but now you can tame yourself unlimited horses. So you just run down, um, kind of south, uh, well, east by southeast of the stables, and you will find some pens with some horses there. Um, to use the taming skill you can open up your skill tree and click the animal taming and then the horse and it should start a dialogue from your character in which they start trying to tame the horse. It may not work the first time but it usually works like within three tries. And you can see that you're also going to be gaining some skill and of course more stats as you use these skills. Alright, first horse acquired. Now it's about time for me to show you some uh, in-game combat here and combat is really the first way you start gaining some income although your first few fights are going to be rather slow just warning you 
Um, but before we even get to that, I'm going to show you some other tricks really quick. Make sure my macro is running there, continually camping and gaining some more skill and stat, as you can see. Um, just ran by the main bank in Aqua there. If you wish to bank at this point, you can just go up to it and say bank. Um, I'll do that later, though. Right now, I'm actually going to gather some more kindling and modify my uh, camping macro. I'm actually calling it a training macro. Um, mostly just need to get this kindling and then I can set up a macro that I can use more effectively while I fight and it runs so I'll be able to gain quite a few skills at once and I'm gonna speed this up here a bit I had a macro pre-made last time so now I'm gonna show you how to make one from scratch just click new enter the name of what you want the macro to be and then I start by recording actions so what I'm gonna have my character doing now is playing their instrument and um, bandaging self. Um, you can do the bandage self through razor or just double click your bandages and then target yourself. I am also going to continue using my camping um, while I'm fighting here. So I'm, what I'm doing right now is clicking on the kindling five times so that action will be recorded in my razor and I'll show you in just a second here. Um, if you record an action like that and then play it and loop it it's going to freeze up the connection between your razor and your main client um, so what I'm doing here is well I'm selecting to click all kindling by type so it's not that specific um, stack of kindling it's any kindling in my bag um, I'm putting delays in um, a three second delay between each one and that's going to keep it from freezing and it's also going to allow me to click on other things and move things quickly in my inventory while the macro is running so it's not completely uh, stopping me from doing other things in game. And that macro should be good there. Um, it has about a 15 second loop cycle between all the delays which is good because my healing timer is about 15 seconds from bandages. Um, gonna get in combat here. Uh, to be in combat, well you can start in many areas. I usually just start on these rats here. Um, you need to be in war mode. You can see indicated on the side on the red there, war piece. You just need to be in war mode and then double click on the enemy's health bar. You can double click on them directly, but I usually pull the health bar out by holding down control shift. Um, that'll highlight the names of things on screen so you can select them more easily. Anyways, I have the uh, razor running in the background with the macro, getting a decent amount of skill gain right here. Right, I'm going to go ahead and speed things up again. You don't need to watch me gain skill and do all that. You're going to likely have to do that with your first few fights anyways. Um, the next thing I will show you is how to pull skills out onto your main screen so they're a little bit more selectable and easy to use. Um, just go into your main skills menu and then click and drag on any skills you want to use. I pull out um, hiding and detect hidden for housing purposes mostly. Um, provocation is going to be the main thing this character is using as a skill, but I'm also going to show you how to make a macro in-game for um, using a skill. Uh, you can set up to have provocation run through uh, Razor, but I like to have things like uh, skills as in-game macros because there's no delay between your client and Razor then, and it's pretty immediate. So. Um, yeah, you just make a new macro, set it up the keys you want, and it should run pretty easily. So I'm going to go ahead and test it. Alright, that macro seems to be working. Uh, so there's nothing really more for you to see down in this area. You may mainly just come down here to fight and gain some of your beginning skills. I'm going to head back out, um, show you some more things in, that you do out here in Oclo. Um, bandage self as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and restock this character's supply of kindling because I still want to keep gaining as much skill as I can with that. And then I'm going to drop off everything I don't need in the bank because I want to show you um, gathering cotton. The uh, cotton fields are to the southeast of town or the bank here. Um, and to start gathering cotton you can simply just go up and double click on any of the 
white plants and they'll become a selectable item you can put in your bag. Um, I'm actually running a scavenger agent right now. I'll show you how to activate it. Just go into your agent, select scavenger, and then make sure you have cotton selected um, within there. You might have to add target to put it into that dialog box, but once it's there and you have your scavenger enabled, um, when you double click on the cotton, um, it would go, or it will go automatically into your inventory. I'll enable it here. So yeah, um, saves you a bit of clicking and dragging to use the scavenger agent there. Um, I'm actually overweight here, so I'm going to have to drop some of this cotton in order to move around. I uh, should have actually dropped this kindling off at the bank before I did this. Um, but I'm going to run my training macro. It'll actually use up some of this kindling, so I have room to pick up the rest of this cotton. Now, um, I kind of skipped over the fact that <laughs> you, you're gathering cotton for a reason. Um, the training I was doing earlier used up almost all of the initial uh, 50 bandages I started out with, and gathering this cotton will um, provide me with a whole lot more bandages to continue the training and uh, basically skill up this character further. Just going to gather a little more cotton here, and then I'll be on my way to show you guys how to turn it into usable cloth and then bandages. Um, also, if you're making a tailor type character, you can use the cloth to train your tailoring skill as well. But anyways, the tailor in Oklo is to the west of the fields, kind of more back where you started as a young player. And what you're going to be looking for in there is the uh, spinning wheel. Just target the cotton in your bag and then we'll double click it from your bag and then click on the spinning wheel. After just a couple seconds, it will turn it into thread and automatically go back into your inventory. Um, if you haven't gathered a lot of cotton, it's not too bad to do this manually, but I'm going to show you in Razor how to set up a macro again. Uh, so, of course, stop the first one, and then I'm going to make a new macro. I have a few wool macros already, just make a new one. Um, so again, just record actions, double-clicking on the cotton, and then clicking the target. And then I'm going to set this up as a loop, so I don't have to keep clicking. Alright, so again, adding some delay here. Um, you can leave your uh, razor with wait for target if you like. I always switch it to a short delay just so it never ends up freezing on the uh, wait for target command, which can happen. Um, so I'm putting that in, and I'm also putting in a delay afterward just to wait so the loop doesn't run so quickly. Otherwise, it'll try to loop every, well, less than one second. Um, but here it seems to be working. Um, it is going a little fast. I don't know the exact delay on the spinning wheel. Usually I have to mess with some of your uh, macros and test them out a few times to get them just right. Normal process here. Okay, so that's going to be all the cotton I have. Um, it's all now thread. The next step to get that into cloth is to go over to the loom, which is conveniently located right next to the spinning wheel here. Um, and I can't tell, but I think this other person might already be using it, but uh, I guess that doesn't matter for this video. Um, when you use the loom, you just put the thread onto it, and I'm going to make the same kind of macro here um, to target the thread and then target the loom. Um, this one I'm actually going to have a much shorter loop because I know um, you need very little delay to continually put stuff on the loom. Um, if this other player is using it, we're going to kind of mix up who gets how much uh, bolts of cloth. I'll see in a second. Yeah, so they're they're using it because within five times I should get the first bolt of cloth. Um, but if we're both using it at the same time, I'll end up getting some anyway. I don't need a lot, just two bolts to start right now. Each bolt is going to get you um, the equivalent of 50 bandages. So that's fine, I'll just come back and do the rest later when no one else is using that loom. Uh, yeah, so I can cut that up into bandages here in just a second. Um, let me just switch back to the training macro. There we go. So I'm really going to try to contain this video to um, Oclo itself, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and show you some of the other things you can do within the town or just outside of it um, and still maintain your young status. There's actually a big variety of um, things you can do within the dungeon and then also a few things you can do around an island and I'll show you what those are right now. 
um, just getting some skills trained right now. Um, if you have a little extra gold, um, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and use it once you're sure you have you have everything you want, um, just to get those skills up to a better point. All right, so this is the message board. Um, it basically just lists a number of small quests done by NPCs in game. Um, it's not very good money in the long run, but if you're just starting out with uh, your first character, these can actually be a good source of money, so I'm going to show them to you. Uh, most of them are uh, basically taking a NPC to a different city and they'll reward you. I'm going to show you the ones where it's a rescue mission and they give you a set of coordinates where to go on the island to go save them. Um, and if you don't know, there is a map on the main web page you can use to put in coordinates manually. Um, and that's what I'm doing here. Just make sure you have the uh, north, south, and east, west correct, and then just input the coordinates as you see listed in the upper left hand corner there. And it should create a marker on your map that'll show you where to head. Um, you can also use your Yo Auto Map in various ways to find it. Um, I usually just use it or my uh, mini map to get the general location right. Um, I'm also going to find a I'm not sure what they call it. It's either a mercenary, higher lane. It's called many things in many games. Basically, an NPC you can hire and they'll fight with you. Um, and they're actually very inexpensive, so they're useful at the beginning of the game. Uh, you can have them take damage for you, and they can sometimes also do a decent amount of damage. I just need to find one to hire first. Um, and you can also train your healing on them quite well if uh, they're consistently taking damage from a monster. So I think this one will work right here. Let's find out. Nope. If they cost that little, they're not worth it. You need to find one who has like armor and a shield, usually. Like that guy. Right, so to hire any of these guys, you just walk up and say hire, and they'll tell you the uh, gold amount you need to drop on them in order for them to start following you. And once you do that, they basically respond as a tamed pet. Um, they follow all the same commands. You can tell them to guard you, follow you, stay, or whatever. Um, and then to release them, you just type their name and release. You can also rename them if you want, uh, same as a pet. I'm just going to call this one Merce. Uh, it would be helpful. Hang on, spell Merce correct. Uh, there we go. Anyways, um, you'll see why they're useful in just a second. I'm going to speed it up here so we get to the target location. Here we are. So this is what's most commonly referred to as an NPC camp. Um, they always have four enemies and then a, a regular NPC that if you walk up to you can rescue by saying um, I will take thee and then they'll give you a dialogue as to where you can take them and they'll give you a reward for turning it in. Also, and uh, more importantly, there are two chests or uh, boxes within the tent here that if you um, if you have lock picking, you can get them both. Or if you have high enough major, you can unlock the second one. Anyhow, it's uh, kind of hard to see with this fight that uh, my mercen mercenary is actually helping. Um, I'm going to go in here and see what's going on. The, the box is always trapped, so just be ready for that. There it is. Um, but there's always a... I think at least maybe a hundred gold in there. Um, it varies quite a bit, but between the gold and the loot it's usually a value of around 200 for the smaller box here. If you have lock picking for the chest, um, that one can usually get you more like 500 gold worth of stuff, because there's often some kind of gems or something in there. Um, and then this is the uh, NPC in here. You can just say I will take thee and they'll follow you. Um, probably not going to take him all the way over to that dungeon though, so I'm going to release him. Alright, so these two Ratmen are provoked on each other, which is what this character is going to be doing a lot more of in the future. Um, and then my mercenary is just sitting there hacking away at one of them, I'll work on the other one. I'm actually going to speed this up again so you guys because you'll be able to get a chance to do all this fighting on your own. Um, but before I do that, let me show you how to mark a location because I don't have this camp on my auto map. Um, 
me to know the coordinates. I just like to uh, type in the coordinates, so if I want to come back to this one later, its coordinates will actually show up on my auto map. Um, you don't have to do any of this, but if you want to use your auto map more so it's uh, easier and faster to find things, uh, this is not a bad method. Alright, just going to finish killing these rat men and then I'll be on my way. Um, if you're a new player, and I mean obviously you're going to need some money, it's not a bad idea to uh, use your dagger on the corpses of these ratmen um, because they will drop a green colored leather that is called spine leather and a lot of um, more experienced players will pay quite a bit for it because they don't want to go out and kill these lower end mo monsters and farm it on their own. Um, so it's good to add to the economy for them and they will pay you a lot more money for it than you'll get elsewhere. So that's actually a better source of money than a lot of the other things I'm showing you right now. Um, just selling off some extra stuff in town and training some skills. And then I'm going to show you um, some of the last uh, good locations to fight in Aklo because they're, like I was saying before, there is a variety of locations to fight within the town. Um, and you should try to stay in town as long as you, you know can or if you want to leave that's fine too. But I'll show you what those locations are. First is the west sewer entrance in Oklo. Um, it's right behind the jeweler near the uh, stables. Um, you can go down there and just run through the sewers a little bit. Um, you can access the whole sewers from here, but I usually just take it to fight either the undead in this area right here, or to go further down to where there's actually some pretty difficult uh, monsters. Um, on one side, if you go more towards the west here, um, you'll get a bunch of hellhounds and imps and stuff, and then on the other side is like um, human mages, gargoyles, and even a demon in the back. Um, on the other side you have some elementals um, and some gargoyles, even a blood elemental there if you are up for a challenge. Um, and then when you exit, well I guess you could just call it another location, there's uh, more mages up here. Um, but be careful with those if you're a new player and you've lost your young status. They can kill you pretty quickly. Next of course is the main entrance to the dungeon just uh, northwest of the bank. Um, there's a lot of good stuff to fight down here especially if you're starting out as a provo. A lot of that stuff uh, you can provo on, on each other very early on and get quite a bit of gold. Um, there's also an area here for training provo. Uh, someone's lured a more difficult mob to increase their skill more. Um, not a bad idea if you still have young status, but don't AFK here if you don't have young status. Uh, not sure how long you'll stay alive. Um, and then some gazers, just some more small things to kill here. Um, and then also back in this area, um, there is a kind of underwater undead area, but I uh, won't spoil that. I'll let you explore it on your own. And that is about it for all the new areas I'll show you. Um, you've seen, you know, most locations. I showed you how to, you know, fight, train skills, and do all that good stuff for getting started. If you have any additional questions about getting started, um, feel free to post them in the comments here or on the forums where this is going to be posted. As I stated before, this video is primarily about getting started and staying in Aklo to keep your young status. Um, you can, of course, go outside of Aklo and possibly make more money doing other activities in the game. There is a large number of activities to do, but I feel like a lot of people coming back to this game are uh, doing it for the nostalgic, you know, played this game 15 years ago. They just want to come back and have that same experience, and a lot of what I've shown here um, will probably help most people because, in general, this is how many people started, just a single um, warrior type of character. Um, you can be a warrior in so many ways. Um, but yeah, hopefully this has helped you. Ultima Online Renaissance is a really great server with a strong community. Um, and, you know, the great thing about this game is there's really no right or wrong way to play it. Well, there's a wrong way to play it, but I feel like you have to really try to do that. Um, but yeah, my, th my main thing is really just have fun with it. Um, that's really what people come here for, and that's what I've stayed here for over the last, I guess, uh, two and a half years. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, if you want to see any of my other videos, I have a whole set of gameplay videos. 
Um, you might be able to learn some more from those if you have the time to watch them. But otherwise, hopefully I'll see you guys in-game. Later.